the origins of this idea of the jet engine begin soon after World War I. You have two inventors, Frank Will and Hans von Ohain, who think about what's the next step in aircraft development, and it's more speed, more altitude. They saw the jet engine as providing that. In Great Britain with the Weddell engine, and in Nazi Germany with the Junkers Jumo engine, you have the representation of the first jet-powered aircraft going in the sky. The Weddell engine is called a centrifugal flow engine, in which the actual direction of flow is controlled to go forward, reverse, up and down, which isn't very efficient. It's also a very bulky configuration. The Umo engine is an axial flow configuration in which the air travels straight through the engine, and that is more compact, it has a lower profile, and that's how the future of jet engines are being expressed. One thing that's unique about these jet engines is the very short operational life. It means they have to be designed in a way in which they can be quickly installed and removed. Jet engines in the 1940s are new technologies. The high strength, the high temperature materials, as well as the physical components that can take the RPM, the heat, the energy, they have to be developed. The Whittle type engines, the original W1X and the designs that followed, would fly for about 100 hours. The Umo engines flew for maybe 15 to 20 hours at the most. Jet engines today fly for months and years. Jet engines were already an improvement over piston engines, which they replaced, but today the large turbofan engines on commercial airliners are just flying for hundreds of hours over what those original jet engines flew. The revolutionary impact of the jet engine is through the power and the speed that it provides. So you can carry people, cargo, and weapons much more efficiently on a global scale.